Worldwide Hippies presents Hippie News and Stuff with Winston Smith and the Worldwide Hippies News Team. Welcome to Hippie TV News and Stuff for the week of November 23rd. Brought to you by WorldwideHippies.com. Citizen journalism on the web. I am Winston Smith. Anti-abortion personhood or Republican reach around? What's in a face? The doc is here to tell you. Is that a boil on your ass, or is it Carl Rove? Hippie holidays from L.A., pervert judge alert, he's loose on the streets. Ed Croft, songs of the woods, Michael Kay is back home. Drug use, not just for stupid people anymore, our asshole of the week and more. Top story. From AP, anti-abortion personhood measure cleared in California. Proponents of a measure that would ban abortions by giving equal right to fetuses has been cleared to gather signatures in California. The push comes on the heels of a similar effort rejected by voters in Mississippi earlier this month. The measure would ban abortion and could deter doctors from doing in vitro fertilization. It also will make some birth control illegal. Union City-based California Civil Rights Foundation must collect more than 800,000 signatures by April to qualify for the November 2012 ballot. The foundation's president, Walter Hoy, is an Oakland pastor known for protesting outside abortion clinics. Walter Hoy also has ties with the Republican Party, and it is thought that the signature drive is being funded by major corporate donors to the Republican Party. When asked if this was just a ruse to get more Republican right-wing conservatives to the voting booth in 2012, Walter Hoy said he is hoping for a spirited signature drive for the California Human Rights Amendment. Then he declined to identify any major financial contributors. He then placed the pox on my family and shouted, all hippies should be sterilized. And this. Oil on the ass of humanity gets lanced in Baltimore. Carl Rove, heckled by Occupy Baltimore. This from the Washington Post. The college circuit has not been too friendly to Republican speakers this past week. On last Tuesday, former Vice President Dick Cheney called off a University of Virginia speech after a planned protest. That evening, Carl Rove was met with jeers from members of Occupy Baltimore during a speech he made at John Hopkins University. Nash Jenkins, a student journalist at John Hopkins, was on the scene when protesters interrupted the speech of the former Deputy Chief of Staff and Senior Advisor to President George W. Bush. On the video, protesters can be heard chanting, Mic check! Carl Rove is the architect of Occupy Iraq, and later, we are the 99%. Watch this. It's good. Here with an about face is the doc. Hey, what's up, doc? Well, you know how we do, bugs. Hey, Winstone, thanks for the kind words and hola, hippie. Paz no barrio. Ricardo Vu here, directly the face of bovine bellicosity, American style. Look at his posture, his rhetoric, his look. It all screams, I won't think, you can't make me. I heard it on Fox. Go on, change my mind, motherfucker. His name is Max, and at least he's not claiming he's not one of the 99%, which is SOP for so many of the self-satisfied, self-proclaimed 53 percenters. Just look at that face. Jesus, I've seen cattle that exhibited exactly the same ignorant, perverse, cud-chewing, pugnacious stubbornness when it came time to move them. This is the face of a person who has never once been troubled with nuance, who is a complete and utter stranger to complexity, who has never ever once in all his years been troubled by any idea of any kind of abstraction. And how old is he? Does this look like the face of a 30 year old man? I did the arithmetic. One tour in the Corps, that's four years, then eight years to work his way through school with the GI Bill. 
Anyway, that's 12 years, and he had to be 18 to enlist, so that means he's at least 30. On the PSI did it in three. On the bill, working two or three jobs, carried 18 hours a semester, too. I wonder what his problem is. Oh, yeah, there's not even a flickering gleam of intelligence to be seen in the whole vast expanse of bellicose jaw and belligerent forehead, flushed ruddy cheeks, and the distinctly barnyard-like, ever so slightly crossed eyes. I bet he was a good soldier, though, Strack to call him latterly. He'll work his ass off for the mission and for the illusion of his superiority. He'll take orders. Sir, yes, sir. 70 hours. Sir, may I have some more, sir, please, sir. Hmm. You want your whole army made up of exactly this kind of specimen, big, brawny, inchoately or misdirectedly angry, and not very bright. Eager, though, and willing, just tell them what to do. They'll equate success with virtue, and they don't blame Wall Street. I wonder if Max might even be dumber than he looks. I don't know. This is a very good example of the reply to the tone and substance of this resentful fellow's complaint at a site I'll give you a link to here shortly. It'll be at the bottom of the page one. Here's one money quote from the reply to the link. Um, quote, fella, I'm a liberal, so I probably dream bigger than you do, Max. For instance, I want everybody to have health care. I want lazy people to have health care. I want stupid people to have health care. I want drug addicts to have health care. I want bums who refuse to work even when they have the chance to have health care. I'm willing to pay for that with my taxes because I want to live in a society where it doesn't matter how much of a loser you are. If you need health care, you can get it. And not just by crowding up an emergency room that needs to, should be dedicated exclusively to helping people with real emergencies. Now, I'll bet you. Dollars to quat lose that if that boy could read, and I'm not sure that's certainty, he'd not be persuaded by anything like that argument. He wouldn't get it. But you can, hippies, go to the site, get a copy for further use, because there are more of them than there are of us still. Maybe, maybe we can hold them off at the beach. <laughs> Back to you in Hippie Central, Winston. Thanks, Doc. Once again, you remove the mask of ignorance from the faceless masses. Florida court... Permanently removes hugging judge. No criminal charges filed. Judge James Turner hugged a clerk several times a day for months until she began hiding from him. The Florida Supreme Court last Friday stripped the judge of his job. No surprise since two months earlier they had took away his $142,000 a year paycheck for trying to play hide the gavel with subordinate clerks working for him. Turner, 65, of Orlando, violated several judicial canons, including serving as his mother's lawyer while on the bench, but he will forever be remembered as the judge who hugged and kissed a clerk several times a day four months until she began hiding from him at the courthouse. Turner insisted that he had hugged the woman only a few times and that she never told him to stop or resisted. So what's the problem? Well, several other women at the same courthouse complained about him also. So they must be lesbian, right, Judgey? Anyway, he went through four secretaries called judicial assistants in 16 months. The high court concluded that Turner did so many things wrong so often, both while campaigning for office and once he was elected, that he had to go. That Judge Turner is unfit to hold judicial office and that removal is the only appropriate sanction was what the court said. But they also went on to say that he did not sexually harass the clerks that he had kept hugging. The court said that he was lonely and needed to be needed. So being needy is now a defense for sexually abusing the hired help, according to the Florida Supreme Court. That's going to give them a hock <laughs> in your underwear. What I need now is some reality from Ed Croft. Oh, hi, Winston. Many years ago, I set off to find my own spiritual path. As a young person, people saw that I was a spiritual person and they wanted me to become a priest. You know, being Roman Catholic, you know, that's the way you went. But it wasn't my way. I had a different feeling and I set off to find what that path was. It took me through Celtic Druidism. Eastern European shamanism, Aztec curanderos, many of the healing uh, type of paths. And it led me to Native American culture. And I started to learn 
and I saw how connected they were to the world around them. See, when a Native American uh, goes hunting, they say a prayer before they go out, they give thanks to the animal for giving them its life, and they leave an offering when they go to cook the meat. They never took more than what they needed. And even when the medicine man went out to gather the herbs, he would often leave uh, an offering of tobacco or uh, cornmeal or something and say a prayer to the plant for giving them its life to heal. It was a very connected way of life something that we have lost along the way. We have learned to objectivize just about everything so that if it gets in our way, if it's not convenient for us, we can just simply get rid of it. We can treat animals any which way we want. And we don't even think about where that package of chicken comes from or where the fruit or vegetable that we buy comes from. We've become so disconnected not only from our food, but from each other. We've gotten to the point where we objectivize each other. We become an icon on Facebook. We need to reconnect. We need to get back to the earth. We need to feel the earth between our feet. My heart to your heart. One heart, one spirit. Back to you. Thanks, Ed. Now I have all these snakes in the studio. How do I get rid of them? Anyway, here to rid you of what binds you is the Michael K. Nennett. Oh, thank you, Winston. Good morning, Winston. I know you think it's weird that I was alone at the beach, but guess what? I'm alone here in Woodruff Park, a.k.a. Troy Davis Park. I'm the only one occupying the park because the city has kicked everyone else out. You know, I think a lot of life is about personal choices. So one of my choices is that I need a rich girl. I need a rich girl to drive my deceased car to the unemployment line so I can pick up food stamps and avoid a job. I need a pill. I need a pill. I need a pill that will make me feel friendly, not want to kill. I need a friend. I need a friend in these United States of isolation where even hell's angels are scared to hitchhike we're thinking outside the norm could land you Winston in jail I need a reason to go on living and I think my children will do my children will do back to you Winston thanks Michael glad you and just Joan are home safe this from the AtlanticWire.com science is sure smart people love drugs with over 40 years of research to support their findings, a team of British scientists were slightly surprised to learn that people with higher IQs are much more prone to drug use. It's counterintuitive, said lead author James White. It's not what we thought we would find, and it's not for lack of trying either. The Cardiff University team consulted data from 8,000 people in the 1970 British cohort study. A group of human lab rats born in the same week in April in 1970 and surveyed approximately once every five years about a broad host of topics. The results found that subjects that tested above average on IQ tests at age 5 were twice as likely to have done hard drugs within the past year when asked at age 30. The numbers suggest that they prefer cocaine and ecstasy. The good news for you smart people, however, is that even though you're more likely to do drugs, you are also more likely to kick the addiction faster. If you're reading this and happen to have a high IQ, don't freak out and do drugs. Now, without any need for convincing, here's the intelligent hippie. Thanks, Winston. It's turkey time. You've got your mother-in-law coming. You've burned the first two pies. We've got just a stress reliever. Take some time out to enjoy the holidays with these must-see holiday internet spots. Who doesn't enjoy the childlike tradition of catching holiday TV specials? TV Guide's given us a printable holiday TV calendar so you won't miss the classics. TVTango.com gives us a comprehensive list of cable holiday specials on a day-by-day -day basis to give your spirits a lively kick this season. 
This is the holy grail of holiday TV listings, and they've done all the work for us. Let's talk turkey, and pie, and green bean casserole. Mm. Foodnetwork.com has an entire online Thanksgiving headquarters. You can mix and match recipes and plan your attack. Watch step-by-step -step instructional videos and get help answering your food questions. Visit allrecipes.com for an interactive meal planning guide with all of the tried and true classic recipes that we've come to love on Thanksgiving. Turkey tips as well. And Fact Monster has some great turkey trivia in case you need a subject changer when your sister decides that it's a good time to argue about the tablecloths. Have you done your Black Friday research? Black Friday is the biggest shopping day of the year. If you're ready to face the crowds, the BlackFriday.com has posted online ads and the most popular specials from your favorite stores. You can view online sales papers and more. Also check out BlackFriday.info. Are you in for a good holiday movie? Check out Movies Online for a list of 8 movies to watch on Thanksgiving. Watch your favorite peanut characters online. A Charlie Brown Thanksgiving is on YouTube. You can visit the Peanuts online YouTube channel. Speaking of YouTube channels, all of the holiday sites featured in this video and more are listed on the Worldwide Hippies YouTube channel. Just visit this week's episode of Hippie TV News and Stuff. Our Thanksgiving guide is included right on the description. Take a moment to subscribe. There are new videos posted weekly. Happy Thanksgiving from WorldwideHippies.com To you, Winston. Thanks, Hippie. Why am I so sleepy now? Oh, I hear it's time for our asshole of the week. And this week it goes to the National Press Cup for suspending journalist Sam Husseini for having the guts to ask His Royal Highness Prince Turkey Al Faisal Al Saud of Saudi Arabia, or HRHPTAFASA, as his friends and concubines call him, a tough question at a news conference. A question that dealt with the very legitimacy of the Saudi regime. Before the end of the day, he received a letter informing him that he was suspended from the National Press Club due to your conduct at the news conference, it said. The letter signed by executive director of the club, William McCarran, accused him of violating rules prohibiting boisterous and unseemly conduct or language. Watch and listen. Talk about legitimacy of the Syrian regime. I want to know what legitimacy your regime has. Are you come before us? The National Press Club is just that. It's a club. Just like the Lawyers Guild, you have to be a team player when it comes to handling the one percenters or you're out. Just as a lawyer must know the limits on challenging the rulers, so must journalists temper speaking truth to power. That is, if you want to be in the club, the club that has the power over your job and credibility. So, for being so blatantly punitive to a real journalist and showing how corrupt the corporate media and those who embrace it are, you, the National Press Club, are Worldwide Hippies Assholes of the Week. Please visit WorldwideHippies.com often for original articles from citizen journalists as well as news 24-7. And subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Worldwide Hippies. And visit our store or make a donation and add your voice to Worldwide Hippies community so we can keep up the howl for peace and justice. And you will see us here next Monday.